Hey everybody and welcome to this video. My name is Dave Hedeman with Trimble and this is the first video in our content about what's new for Tecla Structures 2024. The beta has been out for two weeks or so now and I encourage you to go ahead to the Tecla downloads page, get it for yourself and try out some of these new features. Um, this one is specifically going to be about bolt improvements. Now bolts are a pretty hot topic when it comes to uh, modeling in Tecla Structures. I've done a couple of tips and tricks videos over the past several years. Um, my first one got something like 47,000 views as of today. And my second follow-up video has 21,000 views. So obviously very popular topic for how to create bolts. And uh, we think that some of these improvements in 2024 are going to make creating uh, manual bolt groups a lot easier and more intuitive than they used to be. So let's get into it and take a look. So when I activate the bolt command, first off, you're going to see a couple of new options here. There's a new contextual toolbar with three different settings by face, by parts and face, and by parts and points. And there's a couple of other buttons here that we'll touch on in a bit. Uh, but really what this is is two new ways to create bolts and one existing but enhanced method for creating bolts. Um, so we're going to start with some simple examples here of the by face option. The uh, the benefit of the by face option is that you can create a bolt group with a single click. You do not have to select a primary and secondary parts. And the cut length over here in your bolt properties is how it decides which parts are going to be bolted together. So we're going to go through some examples of that. So first off, uh, coming in here with that by face enabled, if I start hovering over the face of this plate, you can see that I'm getting a preview of a single bolt. If you've ever changed your modeling view settings to bolts as fast, uh, you'll see that it looks very similar to that. But I'm seeing that I'm going to get a single bolt if I were to click right now. Over here in the properties pane, if I go ahead and start adding some information, like I want to have a bolt gauge of three and a half inches, and I want to have a spacing of two spaces at three inches, and hover back over this plate, you can see that it's giving me a preview of the bolt group I'm going to get before I even click, before I even create the bolt group. So I have an idea of what's going to happen before I create the bolts. Now some other things that we're seeing here, I'm seeing that it's showing me the dimensional properties of three and a half inches and two spaces at three. That's enabled through this button right here. If I come in here and turn this off, I can actually hide those dimensions where it's just going to give me the bolt preview. Now I don't know why you would want to turn those off. I personally would want to keep those on, but it's nice that they give you the option. So I'm going to go ahead and turn those back on again. And again, when I come in here and I'm hovering over this, um, you'll notice that it seems to be tracking along the center line of that plate automatically. That's actually happening because of this option here, where I'm tracking over the center line automatically for profiles or for plates. And again, I can disable those if I want to. Um, but as far as creating that single bolt uh, group with a single click, I can go ahead and simply aim for where I want these bolts to be click once and you can see that it is going through and actually bolting through both the beam and the plate without me having to go and pick those two options and it's doing that again based on the cut length here so to give you uh, an example of that I'm going to come over to these two plates kind of a silly example I created a big gap between them that we can see here but I'm trying to show you or prove that point of it's going to find the parts automatically based on the cut length. So let's say I have a very small cut length here of two inches. And if you've watched my other videos, you should know that the cut length is essentially telling it how far should it look to find things to bolt to. So if I keep that at two inches and click, it's going to look to uh, one inch below and one inch above where my cursor clicks to find stuff to bolt to. Um, another thing about this bolt group, so I'm not snapping to a center line, I'm not tracking off of an edge by uh, control clicking, although we can do that, but if I want to click a point here in the middle of space, I do need to enable the snap to any position. So keep that in mind. If you go to create a bolt group and you try to click and nothing happens, it's because you do need to enable that snap to any position if you're not actually control clicking or you're not snapping to a center line. So with my cut length of two inches, if I come in here and click, I'm getting a bolt group through just that top plate. However, if I go ahead and enable that command and change my cut length to like 10 inches and single click, 
Now I'm getting a bolt group automatically through both plates. So it's finding the primary and secondary parts simply based on the cut length value. So making creating bolts like that very, very quick and very, very easy. Now looking at that second command, and I'll just stay focused here on this, uh, this portion. If you don't want to have to change your cut length, like let's go ahead and change that back to two inches manually. Um, if I use the by parts end face, that's going to automatically adjust the cut length for me based on selected objects. So let's say I come in here and say, you know what, I'm going to be a little bit more explicit. I want to bolt this plate together end this plate together, and with a cut length of two inches in older versions of Tecla, this bolt group would fail. But if I come in here now, middle mouse click, and again, just sort of aim and click, you notice that the bolts are coming in correctly. And if I select that bolt group, it's automatically adjusted my cut length to eight and three quarters. So the big difference between those two by face is I tell it the cut length, I tell it the distance to look for things, and the second option is I pick the objects and it will automatically adjust the cut length for me. By the way, on either one of these commands, if I want to, I can type in a dimension. So let's go ahead and let's say the by parts and face again. I'll pick these two parts. I'll middle mouse click. And let's say I start tracking off of an edge and I know that I want this to come out, you know, two and three quarter inches. I can start typing 2.75. And that's where it's going to create that bolt group handle. Like if I come in here and actually measure that, I can see that it is two and three quarter inches. Also, as you're coming in here and adding these bolt groups through this sort of, you know, uh, tracking, it's almost like a direct modification enabled input. You know, sometimes I may, I may really dial in my left and right, but then I also need to track in this direction. And you can see how it's jumping around a little bit. It's trying to understand what I'm clicking on. So what we can do is I can zoom in real close here and I can say, all right, two and, you know, maybe two and seven sixteenths from that corner. If I hold down the Alt key, it's actually going to lock that direction in. You can see I, as I move my mouse around, it's not changing that. But now I can track in the other direction before I click to create my bulk group. So you're you're actually seeing that um, if I go back and restart the command, I'll point out where it's telling me to do that. Let's click our two plates again. Um, when I go to, to, to create the bolt group, look down in the bottom left. It says pick a location on a part face to lock the edge direction, hold down alt while picking. Okay, so keep an eye on that down there. So again, if I want to come in here and I want to create a group that's, you know, maybe four and a quarter, let's get to four and one quarter. There we go. And then I can hold down Alt. And actually, let me change my, my perspective here of this a little bit. It was starting to uh, pick the wrong, the wrong direction for those bolts. So we'll go, we'll zoom in, we'll find our four and one quarter. I'll hold down the Alt key, and then I can track off of that edge. Okay, so same concept, and then click to create that bolt group. Pretty cool stuff. Now, if you want to just stick with the traditional way of creating bolts, like let's come back to our first option here, and you want to use the parts and points, you'll get the original old school way of creating a bolt group, but you also get the preview. So you pick your two point, your uh, two parts, excuse me. You can come in here and set up like a a start distance from your DX start, and then you can pick an origin and a direction the same way we always have. So when I go ahead and click that second point, I get my bolt group. So that's going to be your traditional bolt creation method. You're just getting that preview along with it. And to touch on the last button in that bolt group, let me go back and, and start that command again. The by parts and points is still selected, so I'll pick my two parts. We will start to create our bolt group, and I can see that the orientation of those bolts is going to be head on top, pointing downwards. I can click this button right here to change the orientation of the bolt, and now the head is going to be on the underside, pointing up. Let me hit that button again. So now those bolts are pointing down, and if I click the button, now those bolts are pointing up. I'm looking at the plus sign as being the head of the bolt. So when I click my second point, now I'm getting the nuts on top instead of the nuts below. So you can switch that on the fly. Now you can always switch it after the fact. You know, if I come in here um, under the contextual toolbar, we can flip the bolt direction even after they're created, which is pretty nice. But just, you know, understand that as you're creating the bolts, you can choose those options. So 
that's a really quick, really high-level overview of you know this no, new Bolt functionality. Again, beta is now available. I encourage you to go ahead and hit the download page, try it out for yourself, and give us some feedback on this new development.